My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to use the Curves command to isolate a color and really make it pop. But to do this, we're going to work in a color space that most of you are probably unaware of, called Lab Color, or LAB. Now, the LAB color mode works with a luminance channel and two color channels, and it makes it easy for us to isolate certain color properties and better control them. Let's see how. I've got a picture here of a bird, and if you look at the channels palette, you see we're currently in the red, green, blue color mode. So there's the red details, here's the green details, and the blue details. And when an area is white, that means there's a high presence of that color there. So for example, with the bird, there's a lot of red in the bird, although it's not as white or intense as you might think. Let's go ahead though and switch the color mode here to lab mode or LAB mode. Image mode, LAB color. And now when you look at the channels palette, you see we have one lightness channel, which is really a grayscale channel with all the detail. And then an A channel that contains most of the red and green information. And a B channel that contains the blue and yellow information. So what we're going to want to do is make an individual adjustment here to the A channel and the B channel to isolate and intensify some colors. Let's do this by switching over to the layers palette here and add a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to switch to the A channel and come over here and click on the red. Notice in doing that, it's telling me that this is about on that curve where that red value is clocking. If I hold down the command key and click, it'll actually add a control point there. And now we could play with this here. I'm going to add one more control point so this doesn't bend very much and start to pull this down. And notice as we pull this down, how the value is modified. There we go. See? And I'm pushing the values around. If I move this up, it's actually getting a little bit redder. And we're getting a nice increase in the reds there. That works pretty well. Let's do a quick preview before, after. See how the red in the beak is coming through a little bit? And let's pull this up a little bit more. That works pretty well. Let's switch to the B channel and we'll command click on the bird as well. And there's another control point. And let's click once more. There we go. And we'll start to go after this. As we pull this around, you'll see that the color is also changed a bit. There we go. Take this up. And as we play there, we can get a nice subtle change in the color. And I got what I wanted. I got the reds to come through a little bit more in the bird in a very natural way. We'll click OK there and we could toggle that off and on by using the curves adjustment. We've made a subtle but nice adjustment to the value of red and green in the overall image. If we toggle that off and on, you can see the change. Now at this point, you're going to want to convert back. RGB mode if you're going to be using this for web or multimedia. CMYK mode if you're going to go to print. Let's assume that print is your output. I'm going to go ahead under the view menu and say, show me the gamut warning. And this identifies the areas that are out of gamut. We'll then say select color range and we'll use the out of gamut area to select it automatically. I'll click OK to make an initial selection. We'll go ahead and modify that just a little bit. We'll expand it two pixels and feather it just a little bit more. Select Modify Feather and we'll feather that five pixels. And then we can quickly toss on a hue saturation adjustment layer. What you're likely going to need to do is pull the saturation down. There we go. And in doing so, we've removed the out of gamut warning. Notice if we toggle that off and on, you'll see that there is no gamut warning present. We are now safe to go ahead and convert, so we'll say image mode, CMYK color. And I'll go ahead and flatten that so it applies all the adjustments. Now, we've done a nice conversion there. We've taken care of getting the colors a little bit richer for the reds and greens, and then we properly converted it for use in a printing environment. Let's quickly toggle between the original image and its current state. I'll go ahead and call up the history palette, 
And at the top of the history palette is a snapshot for how the document was when we opened it. Let's click the camera icon to add one more. Here's the original image. Here's the new image. And if you look closely, it's not a dramatic change, but the presence of red and green has definitely been altered, and I believe for the better. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. I'm your host, Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com, where you can access more than 100 back episodes of the podcast, as well as download additional tutorials and resources. Be sure to also subscribe to the podcast so you get it free each week delivered to you. Thanks again.